Welcome to the channel, guys. Today we have on an amazing guest. His name is Logan. His channel is Decode Your Reality. He uses numerology and astrology and many other things to decode reality. He talks about the matrix. He's been on the show before. Welcome back, Logan. Thanks, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, love absolutely. your stuff, Chad. I love your, love your channel, man. You got a lot of diversity. That's the great thing about your channel. You have so many different amazing guests on your channel. So, And you're one of them. So thank you, thank th you. Thank you very much for returning. I, I truly appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so it's, a, yeah, it's an honor, man. You know, I had Jordan from the Waters Above channel. I know you're very familiar with Jordan on earlier this week. And we talked about a lot of interesting things. And Jordan mentions a lot about cryptocurrency, finances, I don't really hear you talking much about finances on your channel. Why is that? Yeah, well, Jordan, Jordan and I are really good friends. Uh, and his, you know, he started, <clears throat> he started his journey in the decoding world with crypto. I mean, that was his, and that's what he's really good at. He's known for his market analysis. And, and then he, now he's taking it to a different level. Now he's on, you know, personal development added in there and become, becoming a better person. Um, so that's, that's kind of his, his forte. Um, I, I I do get involved in crypto. Uh, I just kind of I kind of ride coattails, you know, and I'm I'm just in it just because it's there, and you know, and I feel like that's the natural progression where mankind's moving towards. But I just don't really <clears throat> get into decoding the markets like I like that's Jordan's forte, you know. So okay, um, assuming that this is a scripted reality, and I believe that you believe that's the case. But um, it, assuming that it's scripted like a computer, like in a computer, why is it based on astrology and numerology? Why is the computer code decodable through looking at planets and stars, which are itself encoded in the whole matrix? Yeah. Well, if you just look at how we as human beings code software, you know, you're using StreamYard right now. And the people are using their operating systems with their phone or computer to watch this interview. And behind the scenes of StreamYard, behind the scenes of YouTube, Netflix, your operating system on Apple, Android, Mac, Windows, there's an operating system. And someone wrote that operating system with code consider, uh, containing letters, numbers, and symbols. And the final expression of the code is what we see through the products that we use, the screens that we look at. So if you just go one layer above that and you look at it from the lens of whatever created this reality, let's just use the word God because everybody knows that word. God, behind the finished product, when you look at a, a nice green lush lawn, there's code behind that. The final product of the code is the lawn that you perceive with your eyes and then there's a whole array of um, you know, machinations behind that as to how you actually perceive that with the brain and the signals and the pathways and, you know, and the synapses firing off in the brain. And you can, I've decoded all this stuff and it's all part of the, the matrix, if you want to call it that. So um, the code that writes computers, that writes operating systems is the same kind of situation as to how this reality is coded. And this is why astrology, numerology, sine and cosine waves, mathematics, trigonometry, you know, all these formulas, E equals MC squared, you get, they're all, this is all letters, numbers, and symbols that actually make up the final product that we actually say, oh, that's a TV. Oh, that's a glass of water. Oh, that's cards. Oh, that's Chad, you know, because behind you is a very complex organism. You're a you know, very complex organism, and inside of you, you have all these letters, numbers, and symbols that make you up. That's why we have four blood types, right? Why do we have four? There's the number. How many blood types? Four. And then you get eight blood types with the, eight, the negative and the positive, right? So this is all where it just gets ridiculous, and that's why these systems, astrology, numerology, et cetera, they work when you decode from. Who encoded this matrix was it god and is it all predetermined is there any choice that we have to live in it or not my current level of understanding at where i'm at right now chad uh says that we we do live in a predestined reality um is there any wiggle room do we have free will well i think we have a little bit um i think we have i mean 
I, I, le I don't like to really say that movies are the final answer, but they do give us clues. And there was a movie in 2011 called The Adjustment Bureau. And that movie in there, Terrence Stamp, the actor, was telling Matt Damon, he's like, F you think you have free will? You know, and Matt Damon's like, I make choices all the time. You know, and he's like, you have the illusion of making choices. And so Matt Damon went on to say basically that, you know, like, we, we create all the time, et cetera, et cetera. And Terrence Stamp says, you know, like the only reason why your planet is still here is because we intervene in it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be here. It would be destroyed. And you can see what's going on on the world stage. It's chaos and order all the time. That's what it is. And that's what runs this reality. So you can say, well, yeah, it's God that does it. I mean, if you want to bring in the most popular religion in the world, which is, you know, the three Abrahamic religions, the, the Holy Bible is the most popular. I call it a spell book because that's what it is. It's the most popular spell book on the world stage, Judaism and Christianity and Catholicism and all the ones that fit into that narrative. And that book is very crystal clear as to what it says. And in Isaiah 45, verses 7, which is God talking, it specifically says that I create peace and evil. People will use other words to translate it like the Jehovah's Witness organization, which I was raised in. They're going to change it to calamity instead of evil. But it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And so now you're seeing the chaos. You're seeing the evil on the world stage being created over in the Middle East right now. Okay, and what's going to emerge from that is order, like it always does. And this is the scripted reality. I just broke down the whole, you know, I call it the war movie because that's what it is. It's a movie going on over there. I know real people die, but real people die on the television. When you watch a movie and you see someone get shot, did they die? And you would say, well, they're just acting it out. Yeah, but they die. You saw them die on the screen. What's the difference? Oh, that's just a movie. What do you think we're in? You're in a damn movie. This is a movie. Earth is a movie set. Truman Show tried to, there's all these movies that send out these subtle, you know, hints that you're inside of a movie. And so when I went on this, um, this, this road of decoding and I started to break down people, places, and things, I started to realize there was patterns that were emerging and the patterns were very crystal clear. And the patterns were that people don't have choices in the major parts of the reality. I've done so many bands, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, Twisted Sister, The Beatles, Elvis, Prince, Michael Jackson. I showed cr clearly that these people all were destined to be singers and in a band, all of them. They didn't have a choice. They did not have a choice. So, you know, you can see predestination in theology. Judas was the one chosen to, you know, to, to go against Jesus. Jesus says, one of you will defile me or defy me. Well, that Judas didn't have a choice, you know? So you, you can see the predestination and everything if you're just willing to pay attention to it. Mm. Yeah, I thought, uh, well, I'm a, kind of a, a student of Tom Campbell. I really like his MBT theory. And Tom says that, we all have free will and we make free will choices as free will awareness units. However, after listening to you and a number of other guests and thinking about it more, I'm coming around to believing that we do live in a predetermined world. And like you said, we may have some wiggle room for what we can do, maybe minute by minute or day by day. But ultimately, those those free will choices that we make are not going to disrupt everything because if you are chosen to be a martyr or a savior or like a Judas, you know, that's written into the stars. So, yep. you know, I, I get what you're saying. It's a kind of a, in one way, it's unfortunate. In another way, I'm saying, why would the creator make it this way? Because it's almost like, it's almost like as if, all of humanity is just a screenplay and it's just happening and yep. we can just focus on any part of the movie, but no matter what we do, we're not going to be able to change the end of the movie. That's um, right. You know, and that, that's a philosophical debate. I have a lot of questions to ask you, so uh, we can go down that road, but let me get to my question here. You said that Jesus and Lucifer are essentially the same. It's like good cop and bad cop. And that notion flies in the face of what most people believe can you explain why you believe this is so? Well, I have a current decode I have coming out for my Patreons, the final breakdown that I'm going to be doing on the Jesus Lucifer character. And um, it's all based on numbers, of course, letters, numbers, and symbols. And a big part of it, 
um, is the fact that Jesus through a lot of people think Jesus is yes, they call him Yeshua. Okay. But the, 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 the challenging part about that is there was no miracles by Jesus performed in the old Testament. There was no healing. There was no creating fish out of bread. There was no, you know, sermon on the Mount. There was, there was nothing in the old Testament that would even conclude that Jesus was in the old Testament. Jesus came on, in my opinion, Jesus came on the scene in the new Testament. And that's, was a Roman Greek character created. And clearly the evidence suggests that Jesus is tied to the sun, the sun above our heads, which is why he walks on water, the light of the world, all these referencing points of Jesus talking about that. But then you have Lucifer coming in here and there's only one scripture in the Old Testament, Isaiah 14 verses 12 that talks about, and it's not even Lucifer, it's it's Halel. If you put, put vowels in there in Hebrew, it's H-Y-L-L -L, and you can just kind of get the context, hell. It's kind of funny. But this is where you're going to get the contrast of Lucifer, the light, the light, uh, the morning star, right? The bright and morning star. Jesus referenced that in Revelation 22, verses 16, that I am the bright morning star. And that's the big debate. Like, what is it? Is it the sun? Is it serious? You know, where is it coming from, et cetera, et cetera. But I just go all the way back and correlate it to it's all a big Ponzi scheme. So even if there is a separate entity of Lucifer and Jesus, and they're, you know, Jesus had a, a twin brother named Thomas, Right. And it's very dismissed in, in a lot of this, the ancient text of people like the Bible didn't even include the book of Thomas, but it's out there. Right. And Jesus had a twin brother named Thomas. And, you know, wouldn't you know that on the show Lucifer on Netflix, they casted Lucifer to play his actor name was Thomas John Ellis. Hmm. Right. Why would they cast a guy that has a name of Thomas? Why is Neo in the Matrix called Thomas A. Anderson? You know, these are the questions that I postulate and then I decode off of. And it's pretty crystal clear that Neo is Alice. So Alice in Wonderland. And Alice is really from the Bible. The Bible is Alice in Wonderland, the whole story. And you get into all these other movies like the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, you know, Rick Moranis, and he shrinks down. And it's all God, you know, making us small and go or making himself small and going down into the game. There's so many references to this. So the whole Jesus Lucifer thing is tied to the sun and earth. And there just may be a contract. Well, I think there is. And this is a contract between the sun and earth. And there's a lot of referencing points of Lucifer being tied to the fallen angels. And there's merit to that because you now get into what Jason and I, Brashears, talked about on our last podcast, which was let's talk about underground aliens. And this is where you're going to get into referencing points in the movies about the ancient ones. And I firmly believe now, and I've got a, a huge decode coming out on Khufu, the pyramid of Khufu. And I, I, this information is using mathematics that no one's ever, I don't think anybody's ever used it before bringing astrology into this. And there's a lot of referencing points of the fallen angel story coming through the astrological sign of cancer, cancer being a debilitating disease and across the way is in Capricorn and Capricorn is tied to Saturn and the father of time and Kronos. And now you get into the underworld. So there is this reference point of the fallen angels and are we all just the offspring of that, the ancient ones, et cetera, et cetera. And then just who is the Jesus character? See, I'm, I'm very leery about, uh, about uh, using that character. And I say, we're all Jesus. Because who created Jesus? Where did it come from? The church. And the church is big business. And I, my final answer right now, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree, that Jesus, that word Jesus, it's being harvested and utilized not for what you think. Not for what you think. And, you know, it's, it's when, when you look at it and you go study it, it's tied to the sun, the, the Helios in the Greek. And Helios' father is Zeus. And now you get into Jupiter. And it just so happens Jupiter has the great red spot on it, which to me is the all-seeing eye. Jupiter is the largest planet in the canopy. Whether or not people say it's not real, well, I tons of amateur people put their telescopes, you can see it. So it's there, right? It's there because we can see it um, in the canopy. So, you know, is there really kind of a Lucifer character and Jesus character? Well, because the ideas are on the world stage, of course they are. 
because that's how magic works. People say it exists, they pass it on down, and of course the church promulgates it into the idea of the Christ, moves into the Christ, it was a real dude, but clearly it was the sun reference. You know, he dies, he gets resurrected, that's what that happens to the sun. The sun dies and gets resurrected, comes out of the tomb, the tomb is earth, you know, um, so this this dichotomy of Lucifer and Jesus are referenced a lot in so many different movies, especially if you watch John Wick 4, the last John Wick 4, I broke down the stair. Did you see the movie, Chad, John Wick 4? No. Okay. Well, in the movie, at the very end, he has to go and face off on a, in a duel between this other guy at the end of the movie. And it's in France, in Paris, where the Eiffel Tower is, which is just a big phallus. And that's all reference to, to Lucifer. It was created by the guy Eiffel. And it's all tied to the Lucifer and the earth. And then Jesus is in there. And they're just one and the same, in my opinion. But anyway, he has to climb 222 steps to get to the, the basilica, the, the, the massive church that really exists, 222 steps. And that 222 is tied to the element on the periodic table called radon. Because radon, radon, is tied to Lucifer because Lucifer is known as the morning star and the morning star is tied to the rising of the sun and the rising of the sun in the morning time is also known as dawn, Ra dawn. So Ra dawn has 222 as its most average isotope. So it's, it's you have to use alchemy to bridge the gap with numerology and these ideas and concepts because it's all so much of it is alchemy. So, so much of it is alchemy. It's ridiculous. Like Pete, you, your, your mind would be blown if you looked at chemistry and alchemy and you brought it into our reality and you could just see where Jesus and Lucifer fit into this whole construct. It's amazing actually. And it's so beautiful. I wonder if the people who work on these movies, the director, producers, the actors, the, the stagehands, do, the, do you think that they're aware of the symbolism? Because the symbolism seems to be rife in almost all Hollywood movies, especially these kind of epic, dramatic, and also sci-fi movies. I would think that a lot of them know, or some of them know, they're consciously aware of the code. But, you know, as I often tell my audience, I'm consciously, I'm not everything. Like, I, I, once you get down the hole, you realize you know nothing because you then have so many options in front of you to, to utilize right? That's why the ignorance is bliss is, is rather peaceful because there's not a lot of choices and options compared to somebody who goes down the rabbit hole to figure it out. Um, but so I think that a lot of these people that make these movies, of course, they have to, they, they're consciously aware. But when I start to break down, I'm breaking down timestamps, Chad. I literally, I'm going through, I went through the matrix and I, I'm stopping when these actors are saying exact words and I'm decoding it. And I'm, and there's just, I'm like, there's no way that they, they could get it this way. There's just, it's not possible. It's just too detailed. So yes, you can become aware of the code. You can get in tune with the code, but to get it exactly the way these things come out, no way. That's, that's my final answer. And I got support. I'm not going to say proof. I don't like using that word, but I would, I would take that information. I would go up against anybody's research to prove my case, to support my case. When I had Jordan on, he said that he spends up to 12, 13 hours a day decoding. Uh, up, I know you may not do that every day, but what? how many hours do you usually put into decoding? It's, it's, it's an addiction. Mm. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, a lot. If I'm not, you know, I have to force myself to go to the beach. I got the beach two blocks away and I, I literally would rather sit and decode. That gives me the most pleasure then go to the beach. So, and I love going to the beach. I love the sun. I, so I have my routine, but I would say my average day is, you know, I start decoding around four. And if I don't have a reading, I don't get finished until you know three, four in the morning. So it's 12 hours, probably it's a long time. Oh, okay. So you're more of a night owl like myself. Yeah, man. I like the night. Uh, I was born at one Oh three AM. So for me, it kind of fits the narrative. It's, there's a lot of advantages to, to working at night because you know, here I live in a small town, everything shuts down around 10, 1030. It's quiet. The internet's faster. The air's clearer. You know, what, you got the moon. So if you, if you don't mind me asking, what town do you live in? I live in Puerto Morelos, which is just 15 minutes north of Playa del Carmen and 15 minutes south of Cancun. Okay. It seems like a lot of guys have moved to Mexico. Um, and how long have you been there? Uh, oh, let's see. Two, two and a half years. 
Okay. Okay. So you enjoy it more than the States? It has its ups and downs. You know, it's got its perks. I go back to the U.S. and being here in Mexico for so long, I see the contrast of trying to keep up with the Joneses and the busy life and the flash and the glitz and the glamour. Here, it's not like that. I live in a very small, I say monk town, right? There's no distractions here. It's a family fishing town, you know, and I, but I love it. You know, everything's here. I ride my bike everywhere, the grocery store, the gym, everything's within walking, biking distance. So I live a very simple, minimalistic life. And that's allowed me to really do 12 hours, 10 hours of decoding a day because I don't have any distractions. Yeah, I know people are very interested in the questions that I have for you, but also I think they want to know a little bit about your personal life. So that that's a good uh, yeah. background. Is your Spanish coming along well? It's okay. It's okay. okay. Poquito, as I say, it's, it's, it's not bad. I probably should get a little bit more fluent in it, but I just rely on my translator on my phone if I need to. But a lot of people here speak English because it's a very, um, you know, it's a very, it's not they say in a tourist spot, but you know, there are people that come here. Can a lot of Canadians are here. They come here for the winter time. It's going to be high season here soon, you know, so it's going to get a little busier. Well, your shirt says pretending to be human. Yeah. What, is, what do you mean by that? Well, it's just like, I feel like we're all incarnations of the G.O.D. And G.O.D. tries to be human, pretends to be human, but it's not. So it's mm. spirit pretending to be human. All right. Um, you said that you have decoded a hidden astrological map that reveals the start of the events in the Middle East. And this suggests a deeper narrative behind the current situation that's going on there. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what the deeper narrative is? I know you recently made a video <clears throat> decoding, but maybe just give the viewers like a very brief overview or yeah. summary of it. Uh-huh. Well, you got to think about where are the, the three major Abrahamic religions? They all reside in that tiny little city, mm -hmm. you know, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. And there's been so many sieges and fighting and, you get the iron dome there. Why is it iron? Why, why do they call it the iron dome to protect? Because iron on the periodic table is tied to our blood. And iron is 26 for, for its protons. And the yod heh which is the God of Israel, is 26 in numerology, in its gematria. Okay? So you get the iron dome. And so clearly war is allowed. So you have this God of the Bible just allowing war to happen and people getting killed, innocent people getting killed. So that to me is just, you know, it's like we're in a movie. I know it's horrific. It's horrible, but that's just how it is. And clearly the astrological map showed, you know, Mars uh, during the first attack on October 7th at 6.30 a.m. when they first launched their attack, Mars was right at the rising sign position, right there, right across the way from Rahu, which is the dragon's head, which is the ultimate desire. And you had in, the, in that space on the other side pushing out, you had Zeus there. You know, Zeus being in the sign of Aries right now. Aries is the god of war because it's tied to Mars. And then you look at Israel and it's it's you break it up. Is Ra and El. And what's in the very middle? Ra. The Egyptian sun god Ra. Well, what is Ra? You could say it's the sun. There's reference points in the Bible, like in Psalms 84, verses 11, God says, I am the sun and the shield. So there's reference to the Logos, maybe the yod heh being the sun and the moon. The sun and the moon, you know, they're bride and groom. That's how I have them pegged. Um, so the astrological map clearly showed the war being started over there. And, uh, you know, I, I took the, because I was led that way, I it led me to the Society of Jesus, which I know a lot of people are just so angry about it. a lot of blaming going on with this organization. But again, I go back to my foundation, mankind's being used. So when you incarnate and you become a part of this society of Jesus, you were supposed to, right? You were, all those people, the generals, they're all, they all have their incarnation. They all have their jobs to do. You may not like their jobs, but that's what their jobs are. And so when I pulled the astrological map, for the founding date of the Society of Jesus, which was September 27th, 1540, and that was a leap year, the exact position of Jupiter and Aries is the exact position of where it was on the launch of October 6th. Okay, And when you look at the Society of Jesus and you look at their astrological map, they have uh, Saturn and uh, they have Kronos and they have um, Mars, I mean, in Aries with... Um, uh, with um, 
Jupiter. They have Jupiter and Saturn literally right on top of one another in the sign of Aries. Aries is ruled by Mars, so they have war. And what is Saturn? Military, government. And what is Jupiter? Religion. So the Society of Jesus, their whole found, their whole organization, they are the defenders of the church. That's what the astrological map clearly says. And you have Jupiter now in Aries right now where Aries, uh, where Jupiter was with the founding dated Society of Jesus. So they, this is their positions. Like, I don't, I could care less. I don't care. Like if I was over there, it'd be, I'd be a different story, but because people get angry at me when I tell them it's just a movie. I'm like, what about all those poor people? I'm not there, man. What am I going to do? I can't do it. I can, all I can do is if I can sit there and sulk and cry and whine and complain, that's not good energy to give off. No, I'm going to go out and continue to feed the stray animals and the cats and dogs and do what I can here in Mexico that I'm doing. That makes me happy that I would feel it's going to be a benefit to the planet. I'm not over, over, over in the Middle East. I'm not paying any attention to it. it ain't going to get my energy. That is for sure. Because that's what it does. It's an energy harvester. And it keeps you stuck down on your root chakra, your root and sacral. You know, down in the lower depths of hell and your chakras. It's not going to get, I know it's a movie. I already know it's a movie. And it, there, you, there'll be order that will emerge from that. One thousand, you're going to see, you'll see it. It's going to, it's promulgating and moving us into, you know, this, this big, and essentially if we're moving into World War Three, if that's the way it is, well, you know, everything comes in threes, as they say. The numbers don't lie, Chad. I mean, you break down the numerology of World War One, World War Two. And when you do the breakdown, when you add them up, World War One, September, uh, July 28th, 1914, when you add those up, you get 68. When you get World War Two, September 1st, 1939, that's 68. They're both 68s. And now you have, what's the date that's going to add up to 68 to maybe officially launch the World War III? It's, it's not mankind running this show. They have, a, they have a hand in it. They carry out the, 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 they're the instruments, but they're not running the show. They're not, just not. Now, there may be some quantum computer that's spitting out, you know, um, simulations to partake in. You know, like there is this aspect of people saying there's a quantum computer running this world. That may be true. But it's, is it running the world? Well, it's, it's literally the brain behind the operation. So if you had, and there's merit to this, because if there's ancient ones that have been living underground, people call them aliens, and they've been there through multiple resets, mul thousands and thousands and thousands of years. They've been down underground. You would think they would come up, they would take the technology and they go back underground, and then they would emerge with this, with the, when the reset happens, Jason Brashear's uh, KX talks, the Phoenix event, you know, he's big on that stuff there, the wipeout, the clearing of the board. Then they would emerge with this all technology and they would give it to selected people. Well, there may be a quantum computer involved with that. And that quantum computer is spitting out simulations with the criteria of taking astrology, numerology, gamatria sine and cosine waves, mathematics, trigonometry, all these mathematical formulations, and they're putting it into this computer, and then they're analyzing what scenario is going to take place for, the, for what they want to have, what their agenda is all about, you know, or what God's agenda is, if you want to bring that into it. There's so many different variables that we can take and go real, real science fiction-y here. You know, I don't mm. want to get too deep because I know you have more questions. Thank you. Um, I, I know you said you're really not putting your energy into the war. You've looked into it a little bit, but two questions – how long do you think it'll go on for? And I understand there'll be order out of chaos. And you talked about World War III. Do you have any foreseeable prediction of when World War III will happen? Well, I'm very lenient on giving out predictions, although in my last live presentation I just did on Wednesday talking about the war movie, that's what I call it, I gave my, my analysis, my, the, poss the possible dates, of when the official start date would be. And I have it October 15th, November 14th, or December 13th, those three days, if it does indeed, you know, get officially launched in 2023. If you then, if it doesn't, then those would wash out. But I'm looking for a 68 date because see, in 2008, there was a band called Slipknot. I don't know if you're into that kind of stuff, but I've they have a, that. okay, well they have a, they had it came out with an album in 2008 and the title was called All Hope Is Gone. It, 2008 is a leap year, by the way. All hope is gone. And they have a song on that album. It's called Gamatria. And in parentheses, it says the killing name. And what do you think that ends up being in numerology? 68. That matches the numerology life path of World War I, World War II. And then I would say that it does World War III, if that's what we are moving towards, 
will probably be a direct match to that 68. Did you say October 15th? Yeah, uh, October 15th, which is just a couple days away, uh, November 14th and December 13th. Those would be the days that add up to 68 using the same formula as we did with World War One and World War Two. But if those don't work, then it would just pan over into 2024. I don't know. Like I, And again, I don't really care. Like I care about innocent people getting killed, but there's nothing I can do about it because I don't live over there. So well, well, you're, you're talking about. I mean, today is the 14th, so October 15th is tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah. tomorrow, if it doesn't World happen, World War III is, could essentially start tomorrow. Is that what you're saying? Well, officially, right? I think it's already started, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that when nations get involved and they finally say, "Hey, we're going to war," well, then you know, I mean, who picks the day as to when, like September 1st? Why was that day picked? You know. So uh, when you say World War Three, is it going to look like World War One and Two, where a lot of nations are involved, or it may just I would be think like so. I, I would think so because you know the re I'll tell you the reason why the U.S. Here, here's a big humdinger for your audience. Okay, the reason why the one of the reasons I'm not saying the only reason one of the reasons why the United States backs Israel because they're just one and the same. Now the address I think I mentioned this on your last show the address of the White House. Do you know the address is no. in Washington, D.C.? It's it's on Pennsylvania Avenue, right? Okay. okay. The number is 1600. 1600 okay. Pennsylvania Avenue is the White House address. And then there's this large artificial intelligence gatherer located in Mountain View, California called Google. You probably know who those guys are. But know. what do you think their address is? 1600. What What's with this 1600? Well, because radium, the element Ra, has a half-life of 1,600 years. Element 88, time travel back to the future, 88 miles an hour. Radium, Ra, is Ra-L. That's, you know, that's one of the reasons why the U.S. backs up Israel, because they're all, it's all a big Ponzi scheme. That's why they inaugurate the president with the hand on the Bible, they don't do it any other way. The church and the government and the state, they're all one and the same. They're, they're, it's just a big Ponzi scheme. That's all it is. And you can't get mad at it. That's just the way this whole script was written. And all the religions are all tied together. That's why I laugh when I see them fighting because what are you fighting for? You, work, you all work for the same boss. <laughs> that, you know? That's some incredible information that you just dropped on us. Um, I know my mind's blown. I, I How do they... Obviously, there's there's somebody or maybe a, a small group of people that say, you know what, we're going to name this 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, and then Google's created, and they say, well, we'll call this 1600. I mean, how is it all so coordinated? Yeah, well, I mean, you would think that the, there are some people that have some advanced knowledge at the very top of the pyramid of these organizations, you know? I mean, just you go and bring astrology to back up what I'm saying, and if you go look at when they when they broke ground for the White House in 1808, where was the sun? In Lib Ra. Libra. People call it Leah. It's Lib Ra. You Ra Nus. It's all Ra based. It's Ra. Ra's repeat to do again. Nothing new under the sun, as the Beatles sang. You know, it's all sun reference. And then you have perhaps the um the the, the celestials outside of this this dome that we live in. Um, and you get into, you can get into, um, the archons, which the Gnostics talk about and you get into Jupiter and, you know, it's so interesting because I just had a major release, um, on breaking down the matrix. You should, everybody should check it out. I broke it. I, I know that nobody's ever seen the breakdown of this analysis for the movie, the matrix and, and why Neo took the red pill. Okay. And, um, and what the red pill signifies, and the numbers that correlate to that will just absolutely blow your mind. It's all alchemy, right? Because you get this element called neodymium, neo. It was neo, right? It's in the whole breakdown of the code and how the Wachowskis, you know, they, they, they released the matrix on March 24th, 1999. 24 is tied straight to Jesus. Je Jesus in Greek in numerology equals 24, Okay, in Latin, Jesus equals 24. Okay, so, and what is 24? It's tied to Thomas. Both Jesus and Thomas in Greek, their original language, they both equal 24. And that's his twin brother.
And that's why Thomas Anderson is Neo in the Matrix. You're, and he's a, he's a software writer. I mean, it's all computer-based. I mean, I've broken down like the movie Tron. That's another big one. Mm. Another big bomb that did, we did 1982. They redid it in 2010. And that was a, like, there's a huge scene in there where Jeff Bridges, have you seen the movie Tron Legacy? Uh, bits and pieces of it, oh, but dude, I used to play, I, that, I played the video game all the time. Yeah, man. That, the whole story of that was Kevin Flynn. He's a software engineer. He goes into his own game and then he gets stuck yeah. there. Yeah. And is that the soul trap part of it here? So his son goes and tries to save him. And there's a scene where he's confronting his son and he's telling his son, the only way to win is not to play. So Jeff Bridges says that Jeff Bridges is the creator of the game. He's like, I, he's like, I came down into the digital world and I wanted to create a perfect world. So I created a mirror image of me and that mirror image of me went amok. It ran amok and it started to go on on its own and went rogue and it started to, and now we're, we're enemies, but I'm stuck here. I can't leave. So that's kind of the reference of the soul trap aspect, right? That you're in the demiurge is running this reality and you can't, you can't leave, right? But, you, but he says, don't play the game. The way to win is not to play. So I broke that down. I broke down the timestamps of when he actually said that in the movie, and it will blow your mind of how, the numbers that, that correlate to that. There's just no way these people are getting these, these outcomes. There's no way. I mean, I, to what goes into editing my little videos and yours, you know, like I don't sit there and try to get my voice to exactly get at a certain position. Yet there are people that come to me and say, Logan, do you know you said this exactly right here? And this correlates to that. And I was like, mm -hmm. wow, mind blown. Who did that? I'm not doing it. So the voice in my head, which I had said that the voice in your head, run, it owns you. Whatever that is, it owns you. I mean, I can sit down with a deck of cards and I can have a conversation with these. And I don't say anything out loud. So pe some people that are, you know, in, in the theology, oh, well, you, you, you know, go into the silence because the devil, if you talk out loud, the devil can hear you. I don't say a damn word. I go into the silence. I ask questions and I pull these out and I get my answers and they're crystal clear. Who's doing that? Who's giving me the answers? My life, no matter which way you slice or dice it, continues to be scripted. And I have detached myself from the mainstream. I have released myself from the bondage and burden of fear. I don't fear death anymore. I don't care because in my opinion, death is just a doorway to another dimension. You're just going to go to a different, you're just going to transmute and go into something else. Okay. And do we ever get out of this game? That's the big question. A lot of people, and so I have prison planet one, two, and three, I broke it all down. And then now I have spit you out. This series called spit you out. And there's one scripture in revelation, only one that talks about you, not, it's Revelation 3, verses 16, God says, because you are not hot or cold, because you are not yin or yang, because you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. That's the only scripture. And that to me, you want to be lukewarm. What is lukewarm? You realize that the yin yang, the good and evil are one and the same. They're run by the same boss. So why would I even want to play that? Yes, I'm going to still be loving and service to other people. And that's what I continually do. And I've been doing it my whole life. But I refuse, I'm not going to play. I'm not, play I'm not going to go tune into your stupid show. You know, like they need you to tune in to keep it going. You know, when you, you know how, to use football, for example, the Super Bowl. How much does a 30-second commercial cost? How much does that space cost somebody? Millions of dollars because they have millions of eyeballs on there and they're going to get a lot of sales from that and they're going to get a lot of traction. What do you think is going on with the war? The war is the same thing, right? The news is this. It's a marketing, a, it's a marketing machine. It's no different than the Super Bowl. So they, they have commercials on there and they make money and the war is big business, man, but they're not going to get my, they're not, you know, when I look at it now, I just like when I decoded it, I told, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a movie, right? Just like you can go turn on, uh, Zero Dark Thirty or a Platoon. Or, it's no different. It ain't no different. Um, do you I – got, I got a whole bunch of questions, and, and I feel really bad because I don't know if we're going to get to all of them. But I'll try you, to slow down my response. <laughs> I'll try to tailor okay, down my um, – do you, do you do personal decoding if people contact you? Yeah, I do personal readings. You do personal readings. Okay. Yeah. And how would someone get a personal reading from you? Well, I'm I mean, backed up like two months now, but uh, you just email me, decode your reality at Gmail. Or you can go to cosmicsugar.org and you can just click on the personal readings page. Okay. 
I spoke with Jordan and he said in a couple of months, he's coming out with a new course to teach beginners how to decode reality. And he said it would take about two weeks for them to become intermediate advanced. I was wondering, do you have a course like that? I don't. No, I don't have that. I actually have a course coming out on how to decode yourself. Um, not how to decode, but how to decode yourself, which will be where you can take your astro even if you don't even know anything about astrology if you just follow the set instructions on how to do it you can decode not just yourself but your kids that's really the big thing is decoding your children like if you're a parent like the, you know your kid i say this to a lot of people your kid could grow up and save the world one day kids do they win nobel prizes it's like what about your kid you know so it's like you you may have incarnated and your sole purpose was to pump out that kid so they can go save the world one day, save millions of lives or whatever, right? So the advantage of studying your children through astrology and numerology is that when you see how the operation works for them, and then you say, hey, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the kid says, well, I want to be this. And you can see it in their charts. You would then obviously gently nudge them towards that area of life or support them because you know this is a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, right? But a lot of parents don't do that. What do they do? Oh, you're going to go to med school because I was a doctor. And then the kid doesn't want to go. He's not born to be a doctor. And then they resent the, the parent, you know? And so there's this contrast that goes on. So, but I do have the course coming on how to decode yourself. I already have the free one on my, pay, on my YouTube. Uh, this one's going to be the, the most in depth that, that I can get. Yeah. If I had a child, I would definitely let my child fulfill its destiny in whatever way he or she wants. I would let them be as creative as possible, explore everything and be non judgmental as possible. Um, of course, I would try to intervene only if they were going down a very bad route. But anyway, that said, I probably am not going to have children, so I'm not worried about it right now. Um, how long have you been decoding and how, who taught you how to decode or did you teach yourself and how did you teach yourself? I got started around 2012, 2013. My, my very first uh, video I watched of decoding was of a guy named Marty Leeds. And uh, he he's um, he still does his he still does his research through he uses a very specific methodology using a numerology cipher called septenary which uses the one through seven. Okay, so he uses he uses that one, and I started out with that, and then I got involved, um, just you know, kind of just part of my destiny. Um, it was just part, and you could see it in my charts. You know, you could see my Rahu K2 axis is Gemini, Sagittarius. Sagittarius is where my Rahu is, Rahu's ultimate desire. And the Sagittarius energy is the hermit card, which is studying, becoming, you know, someone who sh shines their light and, and, and gives to people. So that's, I'm living out my life. I'm fulfilling that obligation, but it's, it's all mainly self-taught, but I don't take any credit. Whatever's using me, you can call it God, whatever. I talk to it all the time. That's the voice in my head. That's what's continually downloading information to me. And once you start to really click with the information, it becomes obviously so much easier because I have so much memorization of these numbers and patterns. So it just becomes a lot. It's becomes faster and faster. If someone wants to learn to decode, how long do you think it would take someone if they're doing it a couple hours a day? Is it a few weeks, a few months? Few yeah, days? I mean, you can get a good, you can get a good, uh, you can get a good grasp of decoding in a few weeks. But my recommendation to anybody that wants to, you know, because there's a, the basic fundamentals. You go to these websites, and they usually have four different numerology ciphers, and that's to me is the worst way to start because when you punch in a word, you're going to get probably four different outcomes. And then where do you go from there? So when I got de when I started decoding, I was getting all excited because I would be like, oh, this matches up with this. But I didn't realize that like that's kind of not the same thing. So my suggestion to my audience, I tell all my followers, choose one numerology cipher and create your base foundation. That's really what I did with what I use. Is, I use Chaldean, which is the oldest numerology cipher uh, on the planet. So I started with that. I, I didn't start with that. I started with Septenary, but then I moved over to Chaldean. Because I read a book uh, on numerology called Chiro's Book of Numbers, and that that book kind of really, um, that book really kind of started me on my path uh, of uh, of numerology, and then you know the kind of the rest is history. I've met some amazing people over the years, that like my friend Sharon, who taught you know really I learned the cards from. She's been doing the cards thirty years, and now I have my own methodology you know that she doesn't do. So it's just it's fun you know, but it takes some time to to really get all these um to get all these systems in play and you gotta you can't just use gamatria and numerology to figure out the premise of how this reality works it's just not going to be where it's just going to be too watered down okay uh that brings me to two questions one is um 
when you decode something, what percentage of the time do you actually find something? Because I'm sure it looks like you sit there, you look at the numbers, and I'm sure it's not 100% of the time you're finding everything syncing up. So what percentage of the time would you say that things do sync up and you're saying, wow, this actually decodes? And my other question is, have you ever thought about using AI to decode? Um, I have used the uh, the chat GPT here and there, but I've, I've found some uh, inconsistencies with it. So I, I don't really use it that much. Um, you know, I mean, we're using AI with the astrology, you know, like you pump up a, just pump in the parameters of astrology and it pumps out a, 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 a narrative on the screen. Right. So we're using right. that. And I mean, I really I guess I'm a decoder, but I guess more I'm more of a computer scientist than anything. That's probably what I might really my, my real thing is, is computer science because, because I'm, I'm, I'm taking the, the language of computers and meshing it with the vocabulary and the language of the stars and synchronizing all those kinds of things. So at this point now, Chad, literally when I, when I'm finding something, it's literally right away, it'll tell me whether or not it's a, a rabbit worth chasing. And really now I'm so dialed into it that almost every topic that I, that I'm, that downloads in my brain is, is a humdinger. It's, it's going to be something that is definitely worth my while. So I'm overloaded. I literally have probably 50 to a hundred presentations just sitting in my hard drive waiting to be done. I haven't finished them and they just keep coming. They, they won't stop every, I, I just go, all I gotta do is go listen to somebody talk or watch a movie and hear what they say. I get a, a trigger word and then I'm off to the races. You know, it's just, it's that easy now. So just to clarify, you're not actually using any type of computer program. You're just using the, in, the, the information that you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm using, I have my own, like I use a lot of sh uh, mathematics with the string of pi and phi, the golden ratio. And those, those have been game changers in, the, in, in my decoding efforts because numerology gives you an output, but you know, you know, as well as I do, and you look at gematria and numerology, there's so many different ciphers that you can plug it into. I mean, you have the A through Z, one through 26, right? Then you have the Pythagorean, which reduces it down to a single digit. Now you have one through nine. Then you have septenary one through seven, Chaldean one through eight. You know, there's so many, and I've created my own ciphers. I created the, um, I, 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 I'm, I got a bit, I got a big decode coming out on Zeus, the Zeus matrix. And um, the, 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 the will blow you away. And this just, solidifies that mankind's being used. I, I mean, I, if you go watch my white rabbit resurrections, my matrix four on my channel, if you go watch that one, you will see, you will see that Keanu Charles Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss were destined to come together to be actor and actress to play in that movie. And there is no doubt about it. They did not have a choice. That's how, that's how confident I am with this material. So I started watching the matrix again, right? Breaking down the timestamps. And something hit me, look at the string of pi. Well, I don't know if you know this, but in mathematics, there are actually two pi equations. There's 3.141, and then there's 3.144. And so I found this guy, his name's Jane 108, and he, he's a genius, and he gave me the string of the 3.144. I, I took the 26 digits of that, plopped it into the alphabet, and I started decoding the matrix. Bam. It was mind-blowing. Because pi represents Earth, it represents the matrix. Pi does. That's why the pi the pi is a circle that moves. That's what Earth does. Sine and cosine wave they move. I've, um, I watched the Matrix for about a month ago. When I first saw it in the theaters, I, I saw it right when I came out. I wasn't overly impressed, and I was like, "What is this? This doesn't really align with the first three Matrix movies, especially the first one." It, it just seemed it seemed a lot different. So, but then when I went back over it, I, I enjoyed it more and I appreciated it more. Have you ever decoded the Matrix Four, or if you haven't, uh, just what do you see in it that yeah. that is symbolic? Yeah, no, I did. I did decode Matrix Four. I, it's you called the, the the White Rabbit Resurrections on my channel. Oh, okay, and, okay, uh, that's the White Rabbit. Okay, yeah, Got the it. White Rabbit Resurrections. Um, well, you know, Neo is Alice. <clears throat> You know, it's just so interesting because the word Alice, if you take that in the numerology cipher and, and you compare that to the word Bible, you're going to see that there, I think there's 
12 or 15 different ciphers that exactly match the word Alice in Bible. It's a, it's a game changer. So what is Alice? Alice follows the white rabbit. What is the rabbit? Time. It's the moon. The rabbit is the moon. The sun would represent Alice. So the sun chases the moon. And then the next point of, uh, is earth. So I've, I, I have a decode called 42. Life, the universe, everything, right? Douglas Noel Adams. You know that big thing, BBC did a whole thing. Why 42? Well, it's tied to lead on the periodic table, molybdenum, that's what, and it's lead to gold, right? So at the life, 42 is life. To, well, and during that decode, I showed the water, nature. I like to decode nature because is nature the matrix? Has to be. Everything inside this reality called earth is the matrix. Everything. Every single thing, the birds, the bees, the insects, everything is the matrix. And 42 in the water cycle tells you how the incarnation reincarnation process works. The sun evaporates. The sun gives the water that evaporates to the moon, which condenses. And then the moon gives the precipitation. So evaporation, condensation, precipitation. That is the incarnation reincarnation, the samsara wheel in, in the Vedic text in Hinduism of being on that wheel. And it's, it's never ending. The water cycle is never ending. And the sun's bride is the moon. And there's a lot of reference to the moon being the portal to get in here. That's why I feel they say, follow the white rabbit. I broke the scene down. I broke the scene down of when, and the first one, when they come to room number 101 and they knock on the door and they want to get whatever the guy wants to get his whatever, pirated copy of whatever. And then they're like, hey, why don't you come with us? And he says, no. And then remember the girl has got the rabbit tattoo on her shoulder and he sees mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And so I decoded that actress. She's Greek. Let me tell you, man, like how do you cast somebody and then have all these freaking synchronicities? If you go, uh, I, if you go, uh, it's actually not, it's on my red pill. I, it's on my Patreon, but I, 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 it's hard to really put it into context without showing you the slides. But just taking an actress they casted to put the white rabbit on her shoulder that only had a few speaking lines and break down her birthday, her, her, her new, here's the big one, her new, her birthday, can't, her name is Ada something or something, her birthday, it, it, when you take all the digits of numerology and you add it up, it equals 34. You go to the periodic table, what's the 34th element? Selenium. Where does selenium come from? The Greek word selene, and what does that mean? The moon. Her birthday links to selenium and the moon, and she, the moon's the white rabbit. Did they, did, did they, who casted this woman to, pl to play that character that knocks at the door? Come on. It's that crazy. That just, that nuts. So we live in a fully constructed predestined reality, and that's just the way it is. And that's my final answer, Chad. But is it a soul trap? Because you mentioned soul trap before. Yeah, I mean, it could be, right? It could be a soul trap. I mean, I'm working on some big material right now about getting spit out, that Revelation 3 verses 16. You know, if you don't want to play anymore, you got to be lukewarm. Well, what does lukewarm mean? Because clearly the hot and cold reference in Revelation 3 verses 16, God says, because you're lukewarm and you're not hot or cold, I'll spew you out of thy mouth. Well, it's okay, so you're not hot or cold and you're lukewarm. We got that. So what is hot or cold? Go to Isaiah 45 verses 7. God says, I create peace and evil. That's hot or cold. So, you know, like, are you going to be peace or evil? Well, they're one and the same, dude. You know, like, I, I get it, God. You know, like, whoever runs this reality, I see your game. Like, it's a cool game. It's a fun game. But, like, is there a chance to escape? And then what, look, what does it look like if we do get out to get out of this game? Do we graduate to the next level? And is it only a fine few? You know, Jesus says to go to the kingdom of God will be like putting a camel through the eye of a needle. Like, it's impossible. Right. Most people, because you know why people are, people love this reality. They love the game. They love playing it. They love humping. They like making babies. Or, you know, think about it. Why is sex? Why is orgasms like the greatest feeling in the world? Because it entices you to pump out another kid because the game needs players. Every time a kid gets pumped out, a spirit goes inside that kid. Now you got an avatar to play with. I mean, Gen if you're, I mean, I can decode the Bible left and right and tell you, like, you're not going to hear this from the pastor. Genesis 6, verses 3, specifically has the Yodei Vahe saying, my spirit shall not reside in man forever. It doesn't say your spirit, it says my spirit, and he shall only be 120 years. 
And you then you correlate that to alchemy. And what is 120 tied to? The 51st element called antimony. And antimony, if you go look at it on the periodic table, this, the icon is the, the implant in your brain. It's the all-seeing eye of Horus. And that's 51, the element. And you go back to the pyramid, Khufu, what are the degrees at the slope? 51 degrees. I'm telling you, this all goes back to Egypt, man. And I, my, my final answer here with that is, if those pyramids, they never will, but if those pyramids were to be removed, I feel like our reality would completely change. It would be oh. dismantled. Yeah, that, that was one of my questions, but that you kind of answered it right there. Some people feel that everything is revealed to you when you die. I believe that's what Darius said, but I don't believe that. I don't believe that we'll ever know. And I don't think the creator wants us to know. Yeah. And well, even, if, even if we could, I think we, our minds, our consciousness is somewhat limited compared to what the creator is. Yeah. So it's like you can never really understand what what God is or the creator. Agreed. Yep. I'm yeah. more, people ask me like, what are you? I'm more agnostic than anything else because you, once you define God, you put a tight, I just don't think you're talking about the one, you know, the, the, the almighty. I just, anything in the self-contained system is part of the self-contained system. So people, you can have your religions, but they're part of the, if you don't want to be part of this world, that means you can't be part of the stuff, the religion in this world, but you keep going to and think it's going to give you salvation. So I think God is far beyond that. I think this is a beautiful construct, even if it is the demiurge that created all this stuff. I mean, I'm into nature, man. I don't know about you, but like I'm, I'm feeding stray cats, dogs, raccoons. I'm like, I'm out and I'm feeding ants. I'm like, that's what I'm doing on my time. I'm not watching the war. I'm not paying attention to that stuff. because That's boring because, you know, it's scripted. At least animals, you can get a little bit of an interaction with them, et cetera, et cetera. It's a lot of fun. Um, but I think you're right. I think that... Um, like this whole, like there's a lot of out of body experience people that are coming in. There's a lot near death experiences, but see, the thing is, is that you have to tell the story in this reality. Hmm. You can't tell the story out of body because who would be there to listen to you? So it's like, is out of body anything different than a dream? Like I had a dream last night and I swear it was real. You know, is that any different than almost dying on the gurney? Or, or having it, you know, like what you said, Darius, I'm, I'm not dismissing his content, but I just, I'm very, you know, I'm very leery about these kinds of stories and these things because you have to tell them in this reality. You got to come back into this three-dimensional space, your body to tell me the story about what you saw. Well, then I can tell you what my dream was and what I saw, right? So, you know, anyway, my final answer, uh, Chad, here with all this is, you know, that of all my all my conclusions here is that we live inside of a movie. This is a movie, and 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 I and it may be even possible. All the stars in the canopy are all angels, and this is Earth is a vacation for for the spirit, and and it's and there's a lot even like the the, the show Squid Game, or the movie Squid Game. The show you watch that at the very. Do you see that show? No, I haven't watched. It. I, I'm very aware of it, but I haven't watched yeah. it. Yeah. Well, there's there, there, there's an old man in the show. And he plays the game, the squid game. He's the old guy. He's the oldest guy. And people are like, why is this guy playing? He's not going to, it was like, it's a game of death, basically. And at the very end, the reveal, the old man says, he says, he's like, why are you doing this? He, and he, he owns the game, by the way. The old man ends up owning squid game. And they say, why are you playing? He says, because there's more fun playing than watching. Hmm. So that right there, and I decoded that. I decoded all the sequence, the guy, the characters, all of it scripted, right? So there's a lot of reference and merit to either God or, or the spirits. They come down here to, to be a movie actor. I mean, Westworld 1973, Westworld in HBO says that, that you're being used. The voice in your head owns you. That's the spirit of God, whatever that is. Maybe it's an angel that's using you remote control from outer space in the canopy, from a different dimension, from a different star seed, from whatever, from the Orion group, from the Pallades, from, you know, whatever, Sirius, you know, maybe that's exactly how this works. And I think, you know, you're probably right. You're probably never going to know because the game needs players. This game needs players and it's the hunger games. You know, it's, it's all, you know, you're, when you come in here, you're guaranteed to die. That's for sure. Man can't live forever. You're guaranteed to die. Uh, but the fear, the relinquishing that fear, I think, is the ultimate bliss, knowing that you just transmute energy and not having any fear. So that's just kind of how I look at it. Okay, I got one more quick question, and I got to ask you something personal. Um, I know I'm looking at the time here, but you can answer these real quickly. 
uh, my friend Ken, who does a podcast with me sometimes, he wanted me to ask you, do you think that there are plants in the spiritual community, meaning people who are not genuine and are planted here by the elite in order to discredit or confuse people? Yeah, I think that there are clones. I think there are self-made clones. I think that if there are ancient ones under the ground, which I believe emphatically there is, um, they pump out people and it's a factory. So if they want to pump out somebody to be a star of the show, you know, to be a superstar, they can probably do that. They can make a great singer. They can pump out some band, you know, then maybe that's why, you know, all these things, but then you have to have the, you know, then there's, you know, the, like when I broke down Led Zeppelin, they all have mothers, you know, and fathers. And then like, were they clones? Can we, do we trust that information? It's like, where do you draw the line? But I still think, yes, there could be um, an underground factory and they're creating super soldiers and they're going to be released soon. I mean, I, that's what I think. I think they're going to be released soon to do whatever they got to do. So I think they've been slowly probably doing that for, for quite some time, having clones come up and, and being under the guise of, you know, of the ancient ones. It ain't man, I can tell you that. Man's got to, and, and, and I'll leave you with this. This is a very science fiction-y, but it'll be probably like something like the people will really be interested in hearing. There's a movie called Cabin in the Woods. And that movie I broke down. And that movie was basically... The, 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 the custodians of this reality, they control all the gears and levers and all that stuff. It was all, my, it was all again, you're in a movie and they're controlling the movie. Okay. Um, and in the, at the end of the movie, you had Sigourney Weaver, who basically was the, the, uh, the, 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 the spokesperson for the ancient ones. The whole premise of the story was that the ancient ones underground, they, they, they require food. They require, and they had the blood dripping down. They require the food of flesh and blood so that they don't come up. So is it possible that a contract was made between those in the governments and the higher, they made a contract where they send people down there in exchange for them not coming up and wiping everybody out? Interesting. So this is, I know, I know it's very science fiction-y, right? But mm -hmm. if there are ancient ones, if we can agree that there's aliens, you want to call them terrestrials underground, that's maybe, is that why a lot of these kids go missing? Because they're, they're, they're using them as food. But if they don't, if they don't get delivered down under the ground, they're going to come up and wipe everybody out. That's what it says in the cabin in the woods anyway. So that's where I got this idea from that. Like, maybe that's, Maybe there's some truth to that. I don't know. And again, I'm not saying this is true. Everybody listening, I'm saying that it's something to think about. That's all. Okay. And lastly, you said that you're planning on going on a world tour next year, including destinations like Australia, Amsterdam, London, New York, and Los Angeles. Um, can yep. you just tell us a little bit more about it? Like, what are you going to be doing on the world tour? How long will you stay in each city and what will it look like? Yeah, it'll probably just be weekends, uh, but it'll be, you know, go. I used to be on the seminar circuit uh, way back in the day. So this will be, you know, the fun. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I, I miss the, the human experience. You know, like I've been doing this cyber thing for a long time, but it's just not, you know, you know how it is. People like to be around people. So I have this system call, coming out called life coding, which is where you can decode your kids. And it's a lot for couples to understand, understand your partner. So that way you don't get mad at them for behaving the way they're coded. Uh, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll really take off the shackles. It'll improve relationships, marriages, et cetera, et cetera. And then the most important part is you can improve the cycle of your life by understanding what you're being controlled by. You know, like what are you being utilized by? Once you stop looking at the negativity, stop pointing the fingers, stop blaming the predators, they're, they're never going to go away. So you just... You just focus on you. So that's what the tour is designed for. It's going, going around different cities, teaching people this system, and then probably getting in some, some fun tarot and discussing decoding and all that kind of stuff. It'll be mixed in with that. That's the goal. So you basically rent a venue, people buy tickets, they'll come yeah. see you. And are you going to be doing it with anybody or just yourself? Uh, I haven't figured that out yet. I probably will have guests from time to time that want to join in. I asked Jordan, but I, I, don't, I don't think he's... He's up for that just yet, but um, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, we had talked about it, Jordan and I going on tour together. That'd be a really dynamic duo. Um, but, uh, but maybe, you know, some other guests would be cool to have on. Cause there's a lot, of, there's a lot of great people out there that decode that have a lot, a lot more knowledge than I got. Like I'm just, you know, one fish in the frying pan, you know? So there's a lot of amazing people out there that just sit behind the scenes and they, they don't really make themselves known. 
And I know they're out there, you know. And I think we're going to see superheroes on the world stage. That's another thing, too. I think we're going to see the return of the Titans. I think you're going to see superheroes. Awesome. Well, this has been a mind-blowing experience again. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Logan. You're welcome anytime. Thank you, brother. And just if, if you want to just tell people again where they can find you. Yeah, just uh, Decode Your Reality on YouTube. I have this. You can't miss it. I got my logo right there tattooed on my hand. And then uh, CosmicSugar.org is my website for you know booking a reading. Um, just know that I'm backed up right now. It's quite a bit. So you have to be patient on that. Um, and then there's some informative information on the website as well. I got a blog on there, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'm on Facebook. You know, I use that as kind of a bridge to do, to do postings. And then I got my Patreon. If you just type in Decode Your Reality Patreon, if you want, I have a lot of videos that I do not put on on public. Some how-to, they're going to be teaching some stuff. You know, this is for my members. So Beautiful. Th thank you very much, Logan. Much of appreciated. Course. Yeah, you're very welcome. Much love to you and your community chat. Thanks for all you do for humanity. I mean, you're doing your code, right? I mean, I would love to be able to break you down a little bit more. Maybe we could do that one time where I could just, we could pull your astrological map up and talk about everything that you're all about. And you can, I could show you the confirmations of why you're doing what you're doing. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us all the way to the end. We always appreciate that. Namaste. Much love, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.